Hello, hello. How are you? My glasses are fogging up. I just went for an hour walk with my sister and it's cold outside. And so now I'm all like sweaty. So I excuse my sweatiness and my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm happy to be with all of you today. I'm so excited to really talk about this. I'm going to have to take my glasses off because they are fogging up. So let's talk. Are you ready to talk all things sexual trauma, abuse? Are you ready? <laughs> so there's a few things. One, I want to talk about the weight gain trauma and abuse connection. All of you wanted me to talk about that last week. And so I want to bring this up. I know this is a sensitive topic and I really, really understand that. Um, and what I will say is just remember, this is my Thin Within Results page. This is not my <clears throat> Inner Circle page. This is not my 30 Day Challenge page, which is private. It's not a private group. This is my business page. So I want to make sure that if you don't feel comfortable sharing something and other people potentially coming here and seeing your name saying something, be mindful of that. <clears throat> I don't want to put you ever in any situation where you don't feel safe or comfortable or good, okay? So that's just important for me to just note to all of you that this is my business page and other people can come and see this. Um, I will also, just one other thing to note, I will be also removing people's names when I record, when I edit this, when we edit this, it's going to be, um, a, no name will be said or mentioned just to protect everybody's privacy. Okay. When it goes to podcast. So let's talk about sexual abuse, sexual trauma, and the connection with weight and what I've seen and ways to help you navigate this. If you are still caught up in your own story, your own pain, your own trauma, or you're worried that per perhaps or potentially you could be re-traumatized, um, or you don't trust yourself um, with the opposite sex or same sex or you're worried about, you find yourself, you'll get to a certain weight and then all of a sudden that weight loss will slow down and come to a standstill and then you'll start putting on weight. And so let's look at it and I have some tips and some tools that you can use today that I'm hoping will be really helpful and then I'm happy to answer any questions at the end, okay? Um, so I have some notes here because I know I wanted to be really specific about sharing with you some specific tools today. So let's just talk about your body and its design. We know that your mind and your body are designed to love, protect, nurture you, and keep you alive. Hi, Susie. Hi, Heather. Hi, Paula. Hi, Carol. Hi, Barbara. So good to see you. Hi, Jamie. Nice to see all of you here. Thanks everybody for popping in and thank you on the phone. Love seeing all of you here. So, okay, so your mind, body, it's designed to keep you alive. It wants to keep you alive. It wants to keep you safe. It wants to keep you protected. Whenever there's an abuse, a trauma, something happens, whether it's sexual, emotional, physical, uh, verbal, our bodies want to protect us. It wants to keep us safe. And one of the ways it can do that is by creating, unconsciously of course, a barrier. Creating a barrier, and that can be with food, so that we naturally create a barrier. It could be with alcohol. It could be um, going to a therapist and getting that out verbally. But we need a way to move this energy, this trauma, this abuse out of our system. Otherwise, it gets stuck in our mind, in our body, and then we just kind of keep traumatizing, feeling traumatized by whatever's going on. And sadly, a lot of us use a lot of different things, but in this case, there could be the use of food as this unconscious way to nurture, to love, protect, keep ourselves safe. And so knowing this, how do we begin 
to heal this. Now, first I wanna say that I am not a therapist. I am not. I'm just looking at this from the vantage point of what I see and what I've seen help women when it comes to losing weight and navigating and moving through this from a weight standpoint, okay? Not a mental, not a therapeutic standpoint. So I think it's just really important to just, I want you all to know that if you feel that this really triggers you and you want to, you know, seek out therapy, seek out support. You can seek me out. I can help get you in touch with somebody who could help you. Okay. I just want to be really sensitive to, I know this is a sensitive topic. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Denise. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Allison. So, okay. So what I've seen that has helped the most around trauma and abuse, and we're going to look at it in two ways. Let's start with the thing that I see just to help dissipate its, its, its energy over you. When I took a course, I don't know, some of you have done Landmark. When I did Landmark, one of the things they have you do is create a story that still traumatizes you, that still is getting in the way, that you're still living into. And in this case, and how I like to use it with my home study members and my, um, and my private clients, is what I like to do is have you write out your stories. I have them write out their story. So if you've had a traumatic incident, abuse, trauma, that you are still replaying and you know that it's, it's impacting your body, your weight, how you show up in the world, then writing out your story is a really beautiful way to start to look at it. Because again, we don't want something just bouncing around in your head. We got to get this out of you. So writing it out just is one therapeutic. It's great to get this out of your body. Then the next thing I would want you to do is start reading it. What hopefully we want to get to is that you can read your story of trauma, abuse, something that is really that you are carrying with you. That's a burden to you and your heart and your mind and we can neutralize its power over you so that you read it and you don't feel so traumatized by it anymore. So one, you've gotta be open to letting it go and move through you. And so the way we do that is you write your story, one. Two, you start reading it out loud to yourself two, three times. Next, what you do is you start using a different voice, a silly voice, a goofy voice, a clowny voice, a deep voice, a high pitched voice, a silly voice. You start to read it in these different voices. And what it starts to do is it starts to work on you hearing it and you starting to not have so much emotionally tied to that story. And when we can start to release that story inside of our mind and inside of our body, we know it's not going to have the same charge when we think about it. We're not going to need that protection, that love, that nurturing as much in the way of food. So emotionally, it starts to really heal that. And what I find is that some people can do this and in a day. They're like, Psh, it is done. It is out of my system. I'm feeling so good. And others of of you might need to replay the story over and over and it might take days, weeks, maybe a month. But it's worth it. It's worth it to get this story out of your mind, heart, body and so it doesn't have its power over you anymore. So that's the way that I like to use in terms of any traumatic stories that you have that play out in your head and are playing out in your life. That's the way I like to neutralize that. Now let's talk about, maybe you don't have a lot of power over it, but you notice that when you start losing weight, you start getting scared. Or you get worried that you're going to cheat on your husband or wife. You get scared that you're going to be really seductive. You're going to be so promiscuous. You're going to get re-traumatized by being, can, by being um, slimmer and leaner. Um, a, oh, yeah. Can I give you an example of a traumatic story? Yeah. A traumatic story might be um, getting raped. Um, it could be abuse, a sexual abuse. It could be physical abuse. It could be anything that you can't seem to, that just occupies a lot of your time, energy, space, um, and you just feel like you haven't worked through it. 
a trauma can be um, perceived or, you know, it can be a trauma that you just like a story that really has just really bothered you that maybe someone else it wouldn't bother, but it doesn't matter. It bothers you. So it can be, it can be rape. It can be, you know, sexual abuse. It can be molestation. It can be a lot of times I've had hundreds of women come to me with rape, abuse, um, molestation, awful stories that some of you have probably experienced as well that shaped your relationship with food and and you may have noticed unconsciously your body wanting to protect it in the way of weight other people could go to sex and be promiscuous other people could go to having unhealthy sexual relationships other people might go to drugs other people might go to drinking other people right so when we're looking at a healthy way, way to deal with it it's looking at the story and neutralizing it so it doesn't have the power over you so now let's talk about the second part so um there's a few things that I see happen when it comes down to start losing weight and then starting to be nervous. I, get, I hear this all the time. What if I'm so attractive that I want to lose, leave my partner? What if I am so attractive I won't trust myself to not be really sexually permis promiscuous? What if I get all this attention? That doesn't feel very comfortable to me. So... All of these things are really, really powerful, really important to look at and navigate. And you, sometimes what I see is that you'll get to a certain point in your weight loss, and then that's the time that we need to start addressing that particular issue area so that we can uncover what's and unpack what's really going on. So <clears throat> one of the things we're going to do inside of the inner circle in March is look at the area of trust. Because trust is a really big area in terms of um, when you've had abuse and you've had a trauma, there's something about like, I don't trust myself, or I don't trust the world, or I don't trust men, or I don't trust other people are not going to harm and abuse and tra trauma, you know, create a traumatic experience for me. So we are going to talk about trust in various areas of our lives. But we're doing that in March. If that's something you've feel like you want to do and partake in, um, what I would recommend is connecting with myself or Kate, kate at thinwithin.com, and she can um, get you connected with the inner circle. One of the things that I really like in terms of being part of the inner circle is that you've either done the 30-day um, challenge or you've done the home study course or you've done the Thin Within method because otherwise you might feel overwhelmed coming into the inner circle doing this work. So just as a side note, if that's something that is, you feel like, oh, I really could use some trust work, that's what we're going to do in March. So now let's look at what you can do from the vantage point. If that's coming up for you, you're not, you're worried that if you lose weight, something's going to happen. You don't trust it totally, or you start self-sabotaging when you get down to a certain weight. So there are a few things that you can do. One we know that you have these two different types of brains, right? We have this old like inner two-year-old brain. We have this old hind brain that works from a very animalistic place. And sometimes we worry that that part of us will come out. <laughs> so when we're looking at this work, we really want to come from our frontal cortex. We want to come from an adult part of ourselves in looking at this, okay? So when I say that, you don't want to do the work ideally late at night unless you're in a really good frame of mind. I want you to be in this, in a, in a place where you can actually do the work and really look at this from an adult standpoint, from your adult brain. So, um, and here are some questions that you can ask yourself. And I'm going to put them in the comment section here because I know that can help some of you. You guys can copy and paste it. I like to look at a few of these things. One, what would happen if you did receive attention? So we start looking at it. Let's unpack this. Let's look at the worst case scenario or what you're really scared of. So you can start really looking at what are my true fears here? 
what if I do get some extra attention? Is that okay? Because here's the thing, we can't control if somebody's going to look at you or whistle or say, hey, good looking or, or give you a look. What you can control is how you respond to it and feel about it. You can hold the space of, oh, that was really sweet that they gave me a compliment. That's really nice. I don't have to act on it. I can notice that that doesn't make me feel terribly comfortable and I don't have to, like, I'm okay. I'm safe, right? We can't control all things in the external environment if someone's going to look at you. You can't control that. You can't control if someone else is going to say, hey, beautiful. And so what you can control is thinking about it and, and control your thoughts and your feelings inside of you, okay? So what would happen if you did receive attention? I want you to get clear, like, what's the worst that will happen? So you get some stares, you get some looks, okay? Worst case is you'd be totally re-traumatized. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But most of the time, what's, so what is the worst case scenario or what, can I do to deal with this attention? Okay, two, how would your adult self handle it? Not your inner two-year-old, not that part of you that's kicking and screaming and freezing and not that fight or flight response, okay? But what would your adult self, how would your adult self handle it? What would you like your adult self to do if you received some attention and it didn't feel comfortable for you? Okay. You say, thank you very much, or you walk away, or you just take in the compliment and you move on, or you leave this, the establishment or wherever you are, or you tell that person, hey, that doesn't make me feel very comfortable. Please don't say that again. Like, start looking at what, like really we've got to look at this so that you start to develop what it is that you, that you have a plan. You have a plan. And then when you have a plan, it doesn't feel so scary. C, the next thing, third thing, I just wrote a C. Is there something inside of your relationship or your marriage that would have you consider cheating or leaving the marriage? That's an area I hear. Like, I'm really worried I would just leave my husband. It's usually husband. It's not, I haven't had very many people say they would leave their wife. But it could very well be that. It would be my relationship. I'd be my partner. I'd be my spouse. Okay. So that's a side note. That's something else going on inside of the marriage that needs to be dealt with and addressed. Okay? Because for me, if I get attention, it's it has nothing to do with my marriage. I'm not worried about the marriage. And if I were worried about my marriage, then that is something that I know we have to talk about and deal with inside of the marriage, okay? But I want you to consider like, is there something inside of your marriage that needs to be dealt with that would have you think, hey, listen, I, I really would probably leave it. So that's an issue of like, why are you sticking around then? Because that probably is an area that to, to really look at. Fourth, do you feel safe being looked at? Just identifying. Do you feel safe being looked at? Why or why not? And if you don't feel safe and it doesn't feel comfortable, is there something that you could do or say to yourself to be more comfortable with it? Like, this is just a compliment. I can accept this compliment. I'm open to accepting this compliment. I'm open to someone looking at me and telling myself I'm safe and I'm okay. Okay, is there something inside of you that really needs to be strengthened and questioned and asked for, from you that can feel safe and comfortable with someone looking at you or somebody giving you attention or somebody whistling or something like that. And then this is where you start to really look at what could help me feel safe? What could help me feel more comfortable inside of my mind, inside of my skin? These are big questions but they're worth so much 
worth your time and energy and love and patience to look at them. So uh, the other thing I would want you to consider is what would you do? So uh, play out different scenarios in your mind. So what do I do? I'm going to go out and somebody I'm at, I'm getting a drink or whatnot and somebody hits on me. What am I going to do? You can have a conversation if that feels comfy. You, you can talk to the, you know, what are you going to do? Say, you know, look away. Thanks, thanks so much to look away. Like, what do you want to do in that situation? What could you do that feels safe and comfortable to you? Because what I don't want you to do is hide from your life. What I want you to do is build up enough self-confidence and self-esteem and self-love and self-worth that you can go places and feel safe and feel comfortable and can accept a compliment without feeling like it's unsafe inside of you and feel scared inside of you and triggering inside of you to want to eat and protect and, and get food. Okay. Next, how can you protect yourself and feel safe as you lose weight and are out and about in the world? Okay, so let's look at some things that you can do that I found that have been helpful for my clients who are losing weight and they notice all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I'm feeling a little bit exposed. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable in my skin. I'm feeling a little vulnerable as I've taken some of this weight off. It's almost like my skin is now closer to, you know, I'm feeling like closer to people. It's feeling uncomfortable. And so there's a few things. There's four things I, I thought of that could be helpful for you. One is you can always carry something like pepper spray carrying something so that you feel like you have something on you if something feels really uncomfortable and out of control. One. Two, I've seen women take self-defense classes and feel very, very um, strong and a sense of security around, here's what I could do if there was an attack or an abuse or a trauma or uh, a, a, an attack of some sort so that I can feel safe and protected. Saying things out loud like, no, stop it, you know, and, and just really given the tools from a self-defense class or safety class so that you have tools in your tool belt to go, you know what? I know how to protect myself. Third, um, you just you choose to do things like like for me I never park by um I I if I'm gonna if it's like later at night and I'm by myself I typically always park in a lit area I never park by a van that doesn't have windows because I just you know if someone if I got thrown in a van with windows or that didn't have windows nobody could see me um I I, that's just, when I come back out to my car, I scan it and I look, I look inside and, um, and then when I'm inside, I lock the door. So I do things to sort of protect my space or if I'm walking, typically at night I have my dog who um, is a lover but also would bark at somebody who did anything. So um, I always have my phone on me I have my usually I have my Apple watch on me that I could call somebody or or I can um I can you know text or whatever I can 911 or whatever I need to do so looking at how can you protect yourself when you're out and about in the world so you feel so much more confident in yourself and in your ability to feel safe because most of this is around protection and safety and the more you can feel safe and protected, the better. Sometimes you feel like I don't even want to deal with it. I don't even want to. I don't even want to go anywhere or do anything, and that could be fine. But if there's a part of you that's ready to stretch out of your comfort zone, you're feeling lighter, you're feeling thinner, you're feeling happy, and you're like, I'm ready to date, or I'm ready to have, um, I'm ready to feel a little vulnerable. You just take one little step at a time. 
for me, when it came to dating, it the safer I felt, I felt safe when I would just meet somebody for a quick drink. I didn't want a big commitment at <laughs> first. I wanted, I didn't want to like sit with someone for two hours for like, or three hours for dinner or have a whole day date. For me, it was like, I want to just get in and get out and kind of just see how I feel about you. If I want to have another date, amazing. But I wanted to do it in a lit place. I wanted to meet up. I didn't want them coming to my home. I wanted to meet up and have that experience so that I could feel really safe in my space, in my body, and in control. So these are some things that you can start to do to start to get in front of and deal with some of these thoughts and feelings and, um, and body image pieces around sexual abuse and sexual trauma or any kind of trauma. Because the trauma can keep living in your heart, in your body, in your mind, unless you do the work to move it out. Have you ever just, have you ever had an old boyfriend that you just like loved so much or a girlfriend that you just loved so much and you were like obsessed with him or her and you were like, oh, I just love him or her so much. And all I can do is think about him and you're like, how am I going to, and then you break up and you're like, how am I ever going to live without that person in my life? They're just like everything to me. And it feels like, oh, no, I'm never going to be able to live without this person. And then all of a sudden, years go on and you like, I have a boyfriend that I was with for seven, eight years. And then now I'm like, I didn't know how it was ever going to happen, how I could ever really live without him, how I could ever part ways. And now I have no feelings about him. <laughs> None. It would be fine to see him. I know what he's up to here and there. Like, it's fine. But there's no like, <gasps> that feeling anymore. I neutralized it with time, with energy, with thoughts, with changing the the field of thought and obviously meeting my husband. It it changed it changed. That's how I want you to feel about your experiences. And some of you have to be open and willing to move through them. Yes, they make up you and your life, and they are part of you. I just don't want them to be the biggest part of you or or creating fear of weight loss, fear of connection, fear of vulnerability, fear of um, your, your body. Because sometimes you get scared, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be exposed. And so these are questions that you can start asking yourself. The best thing you can do with all of this is face it, confront it, look at what you're really scared of. Sometimes I just look at what's the worst case scenario, okay? And then I create a plan for that. My mom, who, so some of you know, uh, a year and a half ago, we lost, almost two years ago, I lost my aunt, very close aunt, I lost my aunt to cancer. And my mom's brother, it was my mom, on my mom's side, um, my mom's brother, older brother, um, is who lost his wife. And my mom said to me, gosh, you know, I'm, it's, it makes me nervous just thinking about potentially losing. My mom's been with my dad since they were 14 and 15 years old, like crazy. Right. And she's like, it makes me scared. Like what would happen to me? And I said, well, instead of being scared and I understand that you're scared, but let's just start looking at when you're thinking about how scary it is. How would I do this? How could I do this? I said, why don't you start making a list and then starting to ask dad how to help you navigate some of these things so that you don't have this fear bouncing around in your head as much. And we can start facing this. And this is the same thing that starts to ha that happens sometimes with trauma, right? It's like, oh my God, how am I going to face my marriage, myself, my relationship, dating, all of these things. And we get so scared instead of really facing them, really looking at our life and our situation and what we're actually really scared of. And you can face it and face what it is that you actually are really worried about. And then when you have a plan, all of a sudden it's like heaven. It's like, oh, okay, I don't have to be scared about that. I now know how I'm going to deal with that. And when you know, then all of a sudden, you don't have to be so scared. You don't have to be so worried about that. 
And wouldn't that be nice to have to, for it to just feel like an experience that happened to you that isn't driving your desire to eat, your desire to not date, your desire to not, or, or not feeling safe in your body. Because I'd really like for you to feel safe and knowing that you as a strong, powerful, incredible woman can take care of yourself and here's how you're going to do it. The other thing that is sometimes helpful to recognize is that you aren't the age anymore of that. Let's say you were traumatized or had abuse or had something happen to you and you were 12 to 15 or 6 to 18 or whatever it is to recognize, wow, now I'm a woman. Now, what can I do as a woman, as a strong, independent, amazing woman, strong woman, handling it can look really different than feeling like you're a, that 12 year old that doesn't have the voice, that doesn't have the um, strength, that may not have the resources to say no, to know what to do. There's also a lot of fear because in when it comes to trauma, as many of you know, from a psychological standpoint, we have this fight or flight standpoint, right? We either fight, we do something, or we freeze. And the fear is, if you're a freezer, the fear is, is well, if I get into another situation, I'll freeze. And that's so painful to me to feel like I don't have control and I just froze and I didn't do anything. That scares me. So that's when you want to look at self-defense, practice saying no, looking at ways to then bring into the <clears throat> energy of like holding up, having like pepper spray or something and knowing, hey, listen, I would, I would spray this and starting to trust that you would actually do something. What would you do instead of freezing? Because the freezing feels so powerless. And so starting to bring in, so that's why I'll, oftentimes if that's the case, if you've frozen, often, you know, clearly therapy is, is amazing, but also looking at some self-defense and how to move into action or and simple action that could help protect and love and nurture you, okay? So what questions do you have? Since I've been talking for a long time here. What questions do you have? Knowing, just as a reminder, I know that, you know, this is my business page. And if you don't want to share anything personal, I totally get it. However, if you do have a question that you would like me to address, I am happy to do that. Um, I think Kate is also here. So if you were to let Kate know privately, I can also answer a question um, for you if you want to be protective of that. So, um if you do have a question, feel free. Because this, I know, is a big area and a big topic. And I hope, if nothing else, you start to look at any trauma, any abuse, anything that is still playing out in your mind. You start to relax the conversation. You write it out. You, you read it out several times, two, three times in your voice. Start changing the voices so that you can start hearing it read in a different voice and this may this will start to neutralize its power over you and it may take some time to do this some people can do it very quickly some people need much more time that's fine if you if it still has power over you and you know that it has power over you when you feel it when you cry when you are feeling the pain and then all of a sudden what will happen is you're like I can hear this and I don't feel anything I don't need anything by this. It's just a story now. And it's part of my life, but now it's just a story. And then one of the things, then the other piece that you can also start looking at are the questions. If you're really seeing that you're concerned about attention or you're concerned about receiving attention or you're concerned about dating or you're concerned about leaving your marriage or you're concerned about being overly sexual, to look at and ask yourself these questions so that you start to really get in touch with what is actually going on inside of you, what you're actually really worried about. 
sometimes there's just a few little things you're like, I'm really worried about getting attention and then not feeling like I have any control. Okay, so if I do get attention, how could I start having more control? I'll walk away. I'll, I will let, if I'm at a bar, I'll let a bartender know, I'll let a waiter know that I'm really uncomfortable. Could they walk me out? I'll, I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll make a call. Some of these things you're like, oh my gosh, this happened when I was 12. That was before cell phones. That was before any of this technology that can be so valuable when we don't feel safe. So to look at this and to really get inside of this is so important so that you don't keep hitting a wall with your weight. And you look at the actual um, situation and you look at what's really going on inside of you, get it out on paper, ask yourself these questions so that you can neutralize all the power. And then you can keep on your on the path of losing weight. So when I see women who ask themselves these important questions, when I'm asking these questions and we're doing this work around safety and love and protection and nurturing, and they feel like they're coming from and they feel empowered and strong in this area, then what I often see is this instead of this resistance, it's this letting go. And then they feel like, okay, then they keep losing weight. So I encourage you to spend your time, uh, spend time looking at this when you feel strong, when you feel like your adult brain is with you and you have the energy to do it. Um, a lot of times there's resistance to doing this and I get it, but being in action is where you're going to really see the results. So thank you all so much for um, asking me and being so brave and asking me to share this information with you, to um, talk about this um, personal information, trauma, abuse, sexual abuse, sexual trauma. It's a big topic um, and it is 100% linked to weight. Like I said, when I would see women coming in over and over and over, there, was, there were two things. It was some sort of sexual abuse trauma or a... Um, a mother issue or a parent issue or a um, mother issue parent, like an adult who raised them had either their own body issues or commented on your body. Those were the two main things that created a lot of, um, I would see as, as a pattern that created emotional eating. Okay. You said, I'm, I'm hitting a wall with my weight, but it does not feel like this is your issue. And it may, you would know if it was, you would know if it was, but there might be other things that are going on that are creating, um, um, and we can certainly, this would be an awesome thing to bring to Friday coaching in the inner circle. Okay. Bring, you can bring that and we can talk about what do you think it might be that's, that you're up against. Okay. Um, and definitely, like discussing last week, a lot of self-love, a lot of kind words, a lot of um, gentleness, a lot of um, a lot of that. And then looking, we can always look at if there's an inflammatory response to certain foods. You can always look there as well. Um, good, good, good. I love, I love you writing on it. I love you looking at this. I love you spending some time really looking at any of these situations that are still playing out in your life and how you can navigate through it so they just don't have the power over you and don't stop you from being this amazing, incredible, beautiful, passionate, thriving you that you deserve to be in your life. Don't let anything get in the way. So focus on it, write about it, do the work, and you will find that it will start to dissipate in your life. All right, everybody, sending you so much love, so much joy. Have an amazing week, and I will talk to all of you soon. Mwah! Bye, everybody.